So hello and welcome to this episode of the Suffer Club podcast. My name is Aaron. Got my good buddy Tyler in. If you remember me and Tyler at the beginning of this, really the launch of the Suffer Club YouTube, like the new thing that we're doing, we talked about doing a half each month. And really today is to kind of talk through that uh, and uh, yeah, what we have what we have been doing up until this moment. So dude, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, we're just going to get right into it. So me and Tyler have set out to do a half every month. Um, and really just the reason is, uh, for me is training. Um, I have a pretty big lofty goal in December and doing a half will help with that. But also with Tyler, um, Tyler has a few reasons why he's doing it. So, yeah, uh, well, it started off as a personal challenge just to keep myself motivated throughout the entire year. Um, we have a official half marathon coming up next month with our wives and then, um, I'm planning to do the full marathon at Disney World next January. So I just wanted to keep a consistent core, you know. Yeah. So, so for me and Tyler, one of the takeaways really quickly is we're we have some goals. We have some things that we're trying to achieve. These are long term things. We're thinking it'll be for me almost a year. It'll be for you over a year to what you're really setting out to do. So it's it's the long play for us. Like. Yeah, this month sucked. The half sucked, uh, but it's it's the long play. It's a lot of the why we continuously tell each other, well, why are we going to do a half this month? And so we're only a few months in, um, and so let's go ahead and just jump back. Let's rewind January yep. when we set this goal out. And so where was our first one? So our first one uh, was January the 11th, and we did, did it – entirely in Kannapolis around the loop and research center. Uh, so that was the first one. And for me, I guess I didn't even maybe realize it or tell myself, but I was kind of nervous because even though I'd run 13 plus miles, it honestly probably been a couple years, but since I'd ran that, that far at one time. So just the thought of, you know, I'm going to be running for around two hours. I was kind of nervous and worried about bonking as far as, you know, not eating the right stuff or staying hydrated because, you know, I guess our consistent long runs up until that point had been six to eight, maybe close to 10 miles. Yeah. So in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I know I can do this. But as it became, you know, imminent, I was like, oh, I don't know. I hadn't done this in a while. Right. So. Right, that, that I, I was last nervous. that last three miles is is uh, unless you run a consistent ten miles, that last three miles can just kind of catch up on you, especially with the type of running we do. We talk a lot in our running, so we're so probably a ten mile run would be closer to a thirteen mile run for somebody that's not talking. I mean, like yeah. we're because we're keeping a high pace, we talk a lot. Um, we literally solve all of the world's problems on every run. Like seriously, we are, but they keep coming back. Exactly. So, so that's why we keep running. Uh, but yeah, that, that first one, uh, for me, I had been running longer distances. I'm pretty comfortable with a half, uh, at the pace that we were doing it, but still. Yeah. So a half in January is cold. It was really cold. It stung. Um, but just being aware of that, we, we ran pretty slow. Yeah. I mean, we've, I think we've gotten... A good bit faster. We typically run in around a eight eight minute mile, something in the eights yeah. lately per mile. But um, yeah, that we first did this one at like a nine forty five, close to a ten minute per mile pace. Which just a few months now, that seems like man, that was pretty slow, right? But at the time, I guess we were being a little cautious, just mm -hmm. you know, yeah, making sure we could finish. Right, a reserve. Our goal is not to go out and set any records. You know, at this current moment, it's just not to bonk. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into to February. Um, February, yeah, that one. Um, well, yeah, that was a little unexpected. So if you know Aaron and me, we tend to not always plan things out. At, yeah, we that, don't, we that don't well. plan very well. So I didn't really have an idea of where we would do our second half. I know Aaron especially wants to have a new location for each one when yeah, possible. I don't like running the same spot. So 
well, we were having dinner one night, and Aaron's like, hey, there's this free idiot run in Albemarle. And I'm like, what's that? And the idiot run, you start at the YMCA in Albemarle, Stanley County, and then you run to the top of Mar Mountain, Mountain and go back. And that's right at 19 and a half, 20 miles. So I was like, well, that's free. You know, there's no harm in which for for real quick it's a free run and honestly if you don't know about the assault uh sorry the uh, fellowship of the idiots run it is a fantastic yeah. event i mean it's what i think six total aid stations um medical support even on the run for a free event volunteers yeah, phenomenal. i mean dude they probably had 100 plus volunteers yeah so in the back of my mind again sometimes i struggle with being motivated I figured, worst case, I would run to the base of the mountain mm-hmm. and back, and that would still be about 16 miles. And 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 this was the, the he had told me this going into it, but I don't. It's been a long time since you've been to Mar Mountain. Yeah. And so when we got to the base, we first were running with a really cool guy who chatted with us the entire time. So when we got to the base, I didn't even acknowledge we had gotten there, and so Tyler was just like in the zone. We got to the top of it. And like now he has to run back. So, yeah. so, so and yeah. Which, and seriously, this up into that moment is is your longest run, right? Yeah, like, so the the completion of the idiot run is the farthest I've run. I've not done a full marathon. Yeah. So that was. I mean, and and on that day, Tyler pushed the pace. Like it was. I, I was. I wouldn't say I was bonking, but I was slowing down drastically. And Tyler was still like driving, and I was having to chase him. And there was a few spots where you dropped me and I had to run back. Yeah. So but, yeah, that was a that was a what was that pace? Uh not about the same pace as our January half, but considering you're doing right, you know, six more miles six and more quite miles, a bit more was, elevation. Yeah. And like Aaron said, it was a free event. They had phenomenal water, Gatorade, food. I mean it was gels and you got swag. I mean like free T shirts. Free T shirts, stickers. I mean everybody was, there was just Super nice. So that was like for me, my first inclusion in like the ultra community. Yeah. As far as people who, everybody there was just so nice and helpful and supportive. They weren't there to, oh, I'm only here for the t-shirt. Right. You know, that that can sometimes happen with like half marathons and full marathons and yeah. stuff. So it was really cool. So f- we, we did two in February because I was gearing up for the run that I just did a few weeks ago called Peyton's wild and wacky 10 by five K. But what we did is we went out and ran four or five K's. Yeah. So that's uh, right at a little under 13 miles, a little under 13, but for me, I wanted to, you got it, check off another half. So I just added a little bit of mileage. And so in that four or five K's, we rested for 15 minutes or 10 minutes in between. Yeah, 10 to 15 minutes in between and then went and ran another one, which is miserable. If you ever want to just really be miserable, do that. Like it's a, it's an easy way to, to hate life because you just get so stiff and it was a cold, windy day. Mm -hmm. So we were just got real stiff, but it kind of prepped me for March, which March for me, I ran uh, a 50 K. So I ran 10, five K's at Peyton's wild and wacky 10 by five K and uh, super great event. Like, man, it was an outstanding run. Uh, ran my non-consecutive running fastest 50K. So I ran a 50K in four hours and 55 minutes, which for me is is really, really good. The guy who won the event did it in three hours and one minute, oh, wow. uh, which is <clears throat> bonkers. Like, his fastest 5K was a 17.22, and his slowest was a 19.32, I think. I know I know all that data because I made a video around it, but like it's it was crazy, man. Just it was a f- freaking awesome event. Uh, and then, which gets us to what we just did. And yeah, so yeah, so we did January, February twice. Aaron had already run more than a half in March, but we kind of got down toward the end of the month, and we're like, well, we got to find somewhere else to go. Yeah, and like I said, we don't always plan very well so we were like well and i had been talking to a friend about groundwork commons a coffee shop on church street in concord so we're like well let's let's find a route let's start at the coffee shop and and end there celebrate with because we're coffee addicts we we are addicted and groundworks is really good 
Yeah, really, good really people good. there. And uh, so we mapped out a, a route and going through downtown Concord, and they have some greenways in Concord. It's really, really nice. I hadn't really run over there. Um, some good elevation, but we weren't far into it at all. And, and Aaron, I got. I think I was, was at like mile four, and my knee. We stepped up onto a sidewalk or ran up onto a sidewalk, and my knee kind of like popped. And and yeah, just um, it had it had been giving me trouble at Peyton's run at that fifty k, but it wasn't it wasn't anything that was enough to keep me from running. Um, I'm a big cyclist, so when my knee hurts in running, I move over to cycling, and it kind of takes that pressure off. And I didn't realize how bad it hurt. Until we got to like mile seven, and dude, I was like in miserable pain. And to this moment, until Saturday, it's the first, or when did we do it? Friday. Friday, when we did it Friday. Friday, that's the first run I've ever stopped. Yeah. So, yeah, if you know Aaron Beaver, he's pretty hard headed and he's not going to quit. So, when he was telling me he was wanting to stop at first, I was, eh, come on, you're just, you know, full of it. But then he's like, about yeah, seven or eight miles in, yeah. like, I'm gonna have to stop. So yeah, and so I I chased Tyler until mile nine and a half, and then I turned around and ran back to Groundworks, and and I only got five point like sorry ten point five a ten ten point three. Um, but and you did pick up something. Very I did. Valuable I got donuts, way. and uh, we good had donuts. golly downtown donuts in Concord coming through clutch. Very good. Uh, see, it was it was really good, but. But man, I mean, I I don't know. Um, I push myself, you know, with the Suffer Club. I push myself to, to as close as failure as possible. Uh, I try to reach the bottom because I don't. I feel like, for me, um, the more I know where the bottom is, the more you know, the more knowledge I have, and so the more I realize how far I can actually dig, and. Like, I don't think I reached the bottom of performance, but I reached a level of pain that I had never, that I was more concerned with the long-term effects sure. um, of it. Um, I mean, I was still was running, I think I slowed down to like a 10, 20 pace. So I, mean, I still wasn't going slow, but... Probably not the smartest thing. No, it wasn't the smartest thing at all. But like, um, and I could have, you know, the, thinking back on it, I probably could have finished the half but like w- at what damage level and, and at what pain level. I mean... Uh, I mean, I was in some severe pain, but for me, uh, it was, I know this is weird and maybe dark, but I am appreciative of that failing. Like, I think for me, finding where I fail is as much as finding where I succeed. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that maybe what I have done in the last few weeks, maybe I need to rest myself in a different area. Um, yeah, excuse me. Um, that's something I'm kind of curious about going forward because I can say for myself, I don't know about you, but over the past six months, year, definitely the most consistent mileage I've logged while running. Thankfully, haven't really had any injuries since then, but they're inevitable. So mm-hmm. I've had, you know, small bits of pain in like my foot or knee or ankle, but luckily so far I've been injury free. So yeah. in the back of my mind, it's like, well, what's a good your my first your first reaction is probably let's just power through it yeah but it's having enough discernment to know when when you really need to back off it is it is and so for me injury is going to happen right i mean it just is it unless you're we're old what we are like old 30 <laughs> and the people listening to this or watching <laughs> they're like you're not old at all uh but in at the level that we're pushing ourselves let me say that at the level that you're pushing yourself, once you start to push up against that threshold of, you know, pain or level, you're going to reach a point where you find your limit. And hopefully it's not like long term injury, but you're going to something's going to tighten up, something's going to hurt. So for me, what I learned um, a few seasons ago was to pivot to something else. And so if your leg is hurting, right, and it's only hurting while running maybe try cycling and so i have found that i have like 
three to four different things that I can pivot to that don't derail me when I can't run anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Because for most runners, if they can't run, you're like, man, what am I going to do? Well, it's finding that thing that you can pivot to so that way it doesn't, uh, you don't get depressed because you can't run or you're injured. And, you know, we have a really good friend of ours who had a bad ankle injury, Kristen Wah. And Mm -hmm. so, like, she has, she has, I have watched her do this because she has had to find things to pivot to because she's just been in a lot of pain. And poor girl is still recovering. But, like, I just saw her this weekend and she's making massive headway. And so, I believe she's going to come back a lot stronger because of the other training that she's doing, which is strengthening other areas of her body. And so, um, but it's just something that I think you have to think about. Like you got to think about being injured. Nobody wants to do it, yeah. but if you can think about it and be proactive on the front end. So, yeah, I mean like that's a, that's a little bit of the injury. It sucked. I, I can still function. Um, but I probably need to back it off. I'll be there for Tuesday night worlds. So I can't wait for that. I will not be there, but, (laughs) um, but yeah. So, uh, what's, what is, um, what's your next half? So, uh, kind of killing two birds with one stone next month, April the 12th doing Oak Island, North Carolina, a little bit North of Holden beach and Myrtle beach area. They have a half marathon, which looks pretty fun. And, uh, me, my wife, Allison, me? Darren and his wife are, yeah. are doing that. And I think that'll be Brittany's first half marathon. Yeah, it'll be my wife's first. So looking forward to that. It'll be flat. Hopefully not too windy. but It'll be windy one way yeah, or the other. The wrong way. <laughs> so that'll cross off April's, and then we'll be the third of the way done through the year. But um, looking forward to that. Hopefully the weather will be better and hopefully get a – pretty good time yeah so yeah the, we have we have um you know some ideas but one of the things that we wanted to do is if you're a runner in north carolina um we would love to know where you're running and we would love to come run with you we yeah. would love to do you know one of these halves if you've not done a half and you're listening to this and you want to attempt one let yeah. us come like let us come run with you we would love it, it pace is not necessarily the thing that we judge by So I know for a lot of runners, they're like, oh, what pace are you at? And then, you know, that determines if we're going to run with you or not. And that's not that's not us. So, uh, you know, if you're if you would say you're a slower runner, we what we would love to do that. And so, yeah, um, yeah, so, man, uh, we got a few more months of this and uh, hopefully there'll be no more injuries. Yeah. So that's a good first quarter update yeah hopefully. and um and we're slowly like by the end of this i want y'all to watch the evolution because at some point in time i'm gonna get tyler to do an ultra like this is this guy you cannot motivate like like you can't you can't be like dude i dare you to do this he will not do it but and he said that he's not gonna do it but i'm getting it on record because at some point in time he's going to do an ultra with me a 50k easy you could do a 50K. Maybe a 50K. Oh, see, we got a maybe. maybe. We got a maybe. No 100 miles. Nope. No thanks. Yeah. So, uh, well, listen, I hope you enjoyed uh, this. Um, you know, listen, the takeaway is be proactive. Think think through these things. If you looked at what me and Tyler have done, I know we rambled a lot in this podcast, but this is the long play. This is thinking through long term. We have some long term goals. Tyler wants to do a half. I'm doing a 100 miler in December. This is the long play that we're doing to this. So, sorry, you want to do a full and I want to do a hundred. And so, this is the long play. The long play is thinking through an injury, right? Thinking through what happens if I hurt my knee? What happens if I hurt my ankle? What happens if, you know, I, like what happens? And so, if you think through those, that's the long play. That's getting being proactive. So that way, when it happens, you can pivot and move straight into that next level. So... Dude, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the coffee. And uh, listen, we will see you all again very soon. Adios.